So then let's see the first example, how to apply attentions to the sequence-to-sequence -sequence model we talked about last week. The idea is it's pretty simple. We mentioned that because we're decoding if each tokens, each token in the decoder may be responsive to different tokens in the encoder. So we want to make this uh, selection more explicitly. What we do here, for each timestamp in the decoder, we just put it as a memory to the attention cell, which is the output, which is a hidden state for each timestamp. We copy it both as a key and the values into attention. That is the memory we have. Then in the decoding step, the hidden state output of the last time step I input as a query to the attention. Then the output of this attention layer will be used as, the, as an additional input to the, the current time step of the decoder. The idea here is that depends what position you have for the decoder. If you, if you are decoding at the beginning, then query the output will be similar to the output of a decoder for the first few time step. So then we will select all this, we will pay more attention to the output of the first few time step of the encoder. If we are now decoding the last part of the sentence, so the query at the output of this previous um, um, hidden state will be very sim maybe very similar to the encode output of the last uh, uh, time stamp. So now the attention layer lets us to pay attention to the deco the time step for the encoder in the last uh, in the last part of the sentence. Okay, so that is how we can apply attention to sequence to sequence. Question. Yes, the key value pairs is the last recurrent layer uh, of the encoder. We will show that in a minute. So any idea, like any questions, like how we, why the attention is so long? Because uh, it's still an attention layer, but it's spent multiple times. Just, but it's a single layer. So different to the recurrent layer, you input one by one. The attention layer, you put all this input to attention layer at the same time. So, so. Okay, so then, Let's see how exactly the input and output we have for the tension layer. The tension layer's memory is actually the output of the recurrent layer, the last recurrent layer for the encoder. You mean the output is actually the hidden state. So uh, we mentioned that um, uh, the recurrent layer output the hidden state to, to, to above, and then also have the hidden state and the memory cell if it's LSTM to the next time, time step. But now we, we just keep all this time step for, each, uh, for the hidden state. Then the query of, of the attention layer is the last recurrent layer for the decoder at the previous time step. Okay? So now, because we now we only show single structure, we didn't distinguish the this time and the next time. So the output of the attention layer will be used as additional input for the current time for the first recurrent layers we have. We concat this one with the output of the embedding layer into the recurrent cell. Okay, so then in the right hand, actually, the input will be the output of the previous time. The output used is the current time input. Okay. So we can directly show the code. It's much easier to understand. 